What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ben and Emil Show. We are, you know, we're going to be working on a new intro. Um, cause and I, this first one is an apology for we're both sorry for everything dating six women at a time. Yeah. Oh, man. That was, I think my first mistake was dating that fifth woman. Yeah. Because then after that, we knew we were in too deep. Yeah. Geez. When I got to number five, well, and uh, I figured, Christ, I, I already have my third girlfriend doing IVF. One of them was doing IVF? Yeah. Oh, geez, Louise. One of mine, at least. Well, we'll get to that in a second. But, <laughs> uh, so um, the meatball special is up, episode two. It's a really good one. So check that out if you haven't. Um, bonus episodes are at benandemilshow.com. Sign up there. Support the show. The support New- the show. The New York show, the live show, is sold out. Thank you all. But very there's always much. inevitably someone trying to um, who can't make it or something. So if you're looking for tickets or you need to, sell, the Reddit is the place to go. Or if you want to scam people who are fans of ours, go to Reddit.com and say you have tickets, and then be like, uh, "Send me money on Cash App," and um, and then say you beat. Nah, our fans are too smart for that. <laughs> yeah, don't they're, fall for they're it. Too smart for that. Um, and then lastly, uh, in the offers in the description and I can't, I, I don't understand. It's Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Glenn's the best, but he is the compliance officer for this, uh, Moo Moo company. And so that's how you know you can trust it. Exactly. Actually. But I can't, for some reason, there's some rule where I can't really divulge the details of this offer through the Moo Moo trading app, but it's in the description. So you want to check, trust me when I say you want to check it out. It's really good. I trust Glenn when trust we Glenn. say you want to check it out. And um, that's Glenn's it. behind so, the camera going. So, no, don't look here. So Andrew Buberman, man, they, they, you know what they ought to call, fuck, shit. You know what they ought to call, <laughs> you know what they ought to call him? This guy, Andrew Huberman, um, Andrew Buberman. More like Andrew Loser, man. No, nah, more like Andrew Buberman. More like Andrew uh, six girlfriend, man. Six girlfriend. <laughs> so if you don't know who he is, mom, um, mom, <laughs> he's a uh, what is he? A, a, I'm finding out a lot of people don't know who he is. He's a neuroscientist from Stanford, podcaster. and he's like a cool one with tattoos. He's basically um, think of a cool chef, but a neuropsychologist. Neuroscientist. You know how they all have their arms crossed. And Dude, shit? this man is on arms crossed mode at all times. Truly. I've never, he's just like, are you sleeping enough? <laughs> Basically, any, any, any kind of pseudoscience, and I shouldn't even call no, it it's pseudoscience, because it's, it's not. Yeah, I don't think that's fair. Yeah, I, I, any kind of um, new thing It's like if you're a about, fucking guy who wants to maximize his betas or whatever the fuck, it's like, he's your shit. It's like, uh, also, I, do, <clears throat> I want to be clear. Be clear. I found him annoying before all this happened. He did. You have a whole stand-up <laughs> bit about it. I do. Uh, yeah. And so I was very thrilled when I was like, I was like, get his ass. And then I was like, ugh, oh, I thought it was going to be something. He seems like not a very nice guy to <clears throat> romantic partners. Yeah. But. Uh, it is ironic to me because. Uh, there you are like some- him. You're like, you were on no, some I fucking. Don't. You were on some like. I'm not drinking coffee till I've. Oh yeah, the one thing that I saw <laughs> that got like regurgitated online that was like neuroscientist says that you shouldn't drink caffeine. You're like, if before. I haven't stared into the sun, I am not drinking coffee. You know what though? I don't do that shit. I wake up and I have coffee. So put a dick in it. Well, apparently that shit. Apparently that shit's still all. Boomerang. But if you're a guy who wants to get your betas right and you're like uh, maximizing your ice bath time and like, this is your guy. That's his deal, mom. He he advocates for ice baths and saunas and not drinking alcohol and not consuming nicotine and just he's cool with nicotine nicotine, excuse me but just not smoking it and the optimal times he's just all about like biohacking body optimism one of my favorite ones was uh like i I can't remember the title how to drink water it would do well that's the thing i was like how to hydrate properly i was like like, step one drink the shit (laughs) Jesus I know, Christ. I, was like, I think maybe he's running out of uh, running out of steam here a little bit because one was just like, hiccups, what's the deal? 
and it's just uh i don't i don't know if he's he's uh got enough runway on the well we're already talking about it so we might as well just divulge a little bit because it's interesting because he's in the podcast space. oh i don't know if we even mentioned it but new york magazine did a big piece on him called falling for huberman and uh at first it seemed like it was going to be a I thought it was going to be a takedown of his whole belief system or, yeah. or a science stuff. Because it does seem a little, it does seem a little weird. I'm like, this guy's a neuroscientist at Stanford, but he's always hanging out in like LA and with like fucking Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. Yeah. I don't uh, <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, let's get down to what this guy's up to. But it's really just about how he has, um, <sighs> he has a crazy complicated romantic life Mm -hmm. and he was dating one woman they've changed all the names i mean i've got an excerpt here you want me to read it oh yeah sure it's pretty perfect uh there was a day in texas when after sarah left his hotel andrew slept with mary and texted eve they found days in which he would text near so these women all got together and figured it out they found days in which he would text nearly identical pictures of himself to two of them at the same time that sounds like optimizing. I mean, honestly, if you're going to have six girlfriends, I think there's going to be some overlap. Gonna, there's going to be plenty of overlap. Yeah. Uh, they realized that the day before he had moved in with Sarah in Berkeley, he had slept with Mary, and he had also been with her in December 2023. The weekend before, Sarah caught him on the couch with a sixth woman. <laughs> Jeez Louise. They realized that on March 21st, 2021, a day of admittedly impressive logistical jujitsu, while Sarah was in Berkeley... Andrew had flown Mary from Texas to L.A. to stay with him in Topanga. Okay, so Sarah's in Berkeley. He's in L.A. with Mary. While Mary was there, visiting from thousands of miles away, he left her with Costello. I don't know who Costello is. His dog. Oh. He drove to a coffee shop where he met Eve. Okay. (laughs) They had a serious talk about their relationship. They thought they were in a good place. He wanted to make it work. Phone died, he texted Mary who was waiting back at the place in Topanga, and later to Eve, thank you for being so next, next level gorgeous and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, this kind of stuff I, I feel bad. I'm, it's, sleep, sleep well, beautiful, he texted Sarah. I mean, the, the, so, some, some takes online were pretty funny because it's like, if this was meant to be a takedown of his... Um, of his like regime, what is, yeah. what is he called? The Huberman protocols. The Huberman it's protocols. like this guy clearly has an insane amount of energy and uh, like yeah. and attention for detail. Yeah. And some people were like, "Well, is it because he got caught?" It's like I mean that that just that day, I'm like, "No, nah, that's uh, I'm yeah, exhausted." That insanely just here, and this guy's what 14 years older than me. <laughs> I'm I'm so tired just I thinking bet about his erections just fucking throb. point to the ceiling. Some coconut smashers on this guy. Coconut smash. What is balls? Um, no, a coconut smasher is an erection that would be so, uh, Powerful so that you could smash a exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, Andrew Buberman, um, yeah, it, it's not going to do anything oh, to him. I, I everyone really who loved this guy, men need a father and they found that <laughs> in YouTube and, um, and Andrew so this one was good for men who need a father because, uh, some of their craziest YouTube dads have, have fallen off like Jordan Peterson, who was telling men to make their beds. That was their guy for a make long time. Bed. Yeah. Uh, wake up and make and that, th- they've been confused because now he just goes on podcasts and weeps and they're like, I don't, who, this used to be my father figure. Have you ever seen a man <laughs> play guitar on the beach <laughs> in so, front of a sunset with his children nearby? No, <laughs> because you took the vaccine. And so now they they have uh, they've got Daddy Huberman, and I think uh, I think it's a good spot to say that we do not endorse his behavior. Okay, we don't think that it's good. It's just funny that it's happening to him. I had a dad. And, I have a dad. Yeah. And so I wow, dude. I you also, don't say that about Ray. You had a dad. Holy uh, God. He he makes me feel. <laughs> uh, it makes me feel like I tried to listen to one of his. Um, the very popular one about alcohol. This was like... Shouldn't drink alcohol. Which fucking drives me nuts because everyone was acting like it was the first time they found out alcohol was bad for them. It's actually really bad for you. <laughs> yeah. That's but what he talks like, it's by the way. like two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll listen. I, I could probably stand to drink less alcohol. And the whole time I'm like, what are you talking about? I couldn't... I, I don't understand anything 
about the human body. He's talking about dopamine receptors, and I'm just like, I get it. It's not good for me. I don't need to. I don't need two hours and fifteen minutes of this fucking bullshit. You know who's a dopamine? Uh, Andrew Booberman. Andrew he's a, Booberman. He's a dope. He's I mean, a, can you believe it? <laughs> he's he's maximizing. It, it it has been nice seeing some people come out, um, and being like, he's a he's dear personal friend. And they, oh yeah, I forgot. I got the uh, I got the Lex Friedman tweet here. I'm, I need to read it in his voice, um, because I you know I I do a really good Lex Friedman impression. Uh, oh, so actually, real fast, there's there's this great tweet exchange. Someone wrote uh, someone named Goo. Oh, on, this is my favorite. <laughs> what happened? And then Culty Bra responds, he got exposed for having six girlfriends at once and Chad ramming his fans like a G and people are shocked. <laughs> and then this guy responds, oh, all good. I thought he was drinking coffee 10 minutes after waking up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What is Chad ramming your fan like a G? Chad ramming. Is Chad ramming like when you... When I believe you it's probably fucking... Double cross? I don't know. All right. So <clears throat> Lex Friedman, of course, has had Andrew Huberman on his show. They've been on each other's shows. And um, Urban Dictionary says Chad Ram is to get absolutely blitzed on stimulants and go about your day like a primal gorilla that escaped from an abusive right, zookeeper of 14 years. I don't care. That's While these stimulants ridiculous. are kick, kicking you in, you typically see a Chad Rammer clenching his jaw like he hasn't had food in years and are nearly becoming deaf because of the viciously... Jesus, God. Okay. I'm just saying. Well, that's I, I why get I, it. I you think asked. I understand you the point. Chad I know really what it's was. like. All right. Here's, I'm going to try my best to do a good Lex Friedman here. It's heartbreaking to see a hit piece written about my friend Andrew Huberman. I know him very well and can definitively say that he is a great human being. This actually does sound exactly Scientist like and educator. Hit piece attacks like this are simply trash, clickbait journalism, desperately clinging on to relevance. Andrew should be celebrated, period. His podcast has helped millions of people, including me, lead healthier lives. Keep going, brother. <laughs> hey, everybody, we want to talk to you about a problem. All right, there's a big problem. Did you hear about it? Data leaks. Data I've, leaks. They're I've be, heard about they're it. They're becoming more and more common. You're losing your data to these uh, to these these bad actors out there. Your sensitive information, your data is up for grabs to the highest bidder. Why is that a problem? Well, it's all your confidential stuff. All your confidential your phone numbers, your home addresses, your social security numbers, all this stuff you're Even typing your shopping into, habits. your shopping habits, anything. You know who it is? It's these data brokers. They're bro they they got your data and they're going, "Who wants some of this data?" From Precious Emil. You want a little? Going, no, please. Yeah, going, please. Well, I got some good news for you. The good news is that you have the right to protect your privacy by requesting that those data brokers delete your information that they've got on you. However, the bad news is that if you do it manually, it could take you years, right? But we got a solution got for that. you. Yep. Incogni. Incogni Ooh. reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. I object. Since, Too bad. Uh, I've actually I've, I've signed up for it. It's actually really great. And you get these little notifications being like, we're fucking bugging them again to get your shit removed. It's great. Uh, so since many data brokers collect your personal information again after some time, we also take care that our data stays off the market by conducting repeated ongoing removals. Uh, yeah, I mean, they also give you a breakdown. It's insane just how many weird places have all your information. Spooky. Use code PAYPIGS at the link below to get to, in the description to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Go to incogni.com slash paypigs that's code paypigs for uh, to get an uh, exclusive 60 percent off an annual incogni plan incogni i-n-c-o-g-n-i dot com slash paypigs he's gonna be fine everyone's gonna i do think that it's a it's a little bit yeah uh, who goes, all right let's move on let's move on shall we i got some good news for you man they put a pig kidney in a guy. <laughs> hell yes they no, put this a is pig what I'm kidney fucking talking in a guy. about there's uh the mass massachusetts general hospital had the first successful transplant of a genetically edited pig kidney into this 62 year old man living with end-stage kidney disease they put in pigs in humans y'all they put they put pig kidney in a guy they put a pig kidney in a guy make it spread folks 
Go Drigsby mode on us. We are not going to put a pig kidney in a man because it's easy. We are going to do it because it's hard. <laughs> because it's hard. And it was hard. They, I mean, <laughs> it was so hard. <laughs> well, it, it took, took them, them like six hours. It took them four hours. Four hours. Yeah. They, they did 69 genomic edits using CRISPR uh, technology to remove the harmful pig genes and add human genes to genes to improve this human pig kidney's full of pig genes this kidney's full of pig genes he's gonna be <laughs> sniffing around for truffles can you believe it uh but interestingly i found this interesting uh the hospital had the first that same hospital did the very first organ transplant which was a kidney and uh they did the first penile transplant in 2016 you know who received Ooh, that Ooh, can you imagine getting some dead guy's cock put on you i'm thinking about it you think it works? Do you think it works just like, you think you can get coconut Hey, you jerk smashers? off that thing. Is it you are you really jerking off or are you jerking off someone else? Fellas, is it gay to Fellas, jerk off your penile transplant off plant? Your b- dick transplant? Fellas, sound off in the comments. I don't think it is cuz I think since it's connected to your brain and you can feel it. I don't know actually, but uh <laughs> begs the question. What happened to the first guy's dick? Did it get run over? Uh no. Why did he need the transplant? I would imagine he did kept he get it shot it? in the dick. <laughs> Oh, the first guy. Yeah, the first guy who's like, I need a dick transplant. And they were like, we got just the thing. Yeah, this This, guy just lost his. This guy just uh, lost his dick. Well, this guy just got fucking killed. Yeah. Uh, You can take his dick. I'm an organ donor, and I hope to one day donate mine. Oh, someone would be so lucky to get mine. Oh, yours. got my face on it right at the tip. Is that what yours looks like? Yeah, everybody's does, doesn't it? My mom told me. Anyway, uh, it's good news, though, because... Uh, I didn't know this. 17 Americans die every day waiting for an organ transplant, and there's 100,000 people uh, awaiting. So this is uh, one of the good examples of technology helping us uh, tremendously. And, when uh, when the pigs were pulled and uh, when they found out about this, they started tugging at their collars and saying, oh, boy, that's not great for but us. But then they looked in the corner and they saw mud and, and immediately yeah. thought, ooh, mud. I want to get a pet pig, man. Jesus. Uh, let's skip the Mackenzie Scott thing. Who gives yeah, a shit? She's the, the, the former she's Bezos wife, uh, Mackenzie Scott. She's donating a bunch of money, and you know it's just she's doing it without strings, which is wild. The other good news: want to give a hearty fuck you to uh, <laughs> Boeing uh, CEO, CEO Brian Calhoun, David Calhoun. Name? David Calhoun. Fuck You'll him. You'll get there. You'll get there. Dave, fuck him, because he's stepping down. He said he's stepping down by the end. Of the <clears day. throat> um. Apparently Which a lot that, of people are celebrating. I don't know if this is like the big celebratory thing. Uh, I, you know, he came in in 2020 after the whole right. uh, after the whole mess with the two maxes going down. But he was on the board of directors since 2009. So. Yeah, and his whole the whole intention of getting him in there was for him to turn around the company and make it a, a safe flying experience for people. He is not done that if anything like the brand is completely tarnished at this point oh uh, across the board between the inner corporate culture the the workers on the factory line the public the uh traveling public yeah the airlines like they're re- whoever's going to be the new ceo is going to have their work i mean out. one of my favorite things though is that uh they they have a quote from a former senior boeing executive and he said it tears my heart out the memes and the way it's characterized in the press, it's inexcusable. They got to get to the bottom of what happened, but more important than that, why? But I love that they see the memes. Yeah. Oh, you think they saw my tweet? If it ain't Airbus, you I'm making my- a fuss. You think a, a Boeing executive saw that? I'm flying uh, tomorrow on a 737 MAX. Everyone say goodbye. And uh, <laughs> if this ends up being it, that'll be pretty funny, I think. I just want you to know that if the plane goes down, I will not be screaming. I will be uh, stuffing my mouth with Xanax, hoping that it activates quicker than the plane goes down. I've got Actually, so- I'll be on Lex Friedman mode and being like, this is a plane full of love and hope. Because that's his take on everything. He's like, love and hope. That was a fucking bad bit. It was okay. Uh- but. Uh, anyway. I'll be on like a 767 tomorrow, so that's pretty cool. That's so fine. you're going to be on an old Boeing. Yeah, this thing they don't old make 767s is... anymore. Should I look it up? Am I wrong? I'm sure it's old. Wait, what airline and where are you flying? Delta. Yeah, you're New York. flying. You're probably flying a, a 67 or 57. It's probably a 67. 
Where is my plane? Where's my plane? Where's my Oh, it's over the somewhere over the country right now. Um I don't know, man. Oh, geez, I'm pretty man. sure it's this a 767. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I was trying to find out also what happens if he's um, exiting early because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people were celebrating the 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 previous CEO going away, Dennis Mullenberg. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's supposed to be his like shameful exit. He was he receives sixty two point two million dollars uh, in stock and pension awards on his way out. That it's, fucking sucks. <laughs> I mean, that so everyone's sucks. like, "How do these guys not feel like they're not going to hell?" I Truly. mean, there's some words from a guy, like from a someone who. So Michael Stumo, who lost his daughter in the Ethiopian Airlines crash, said he was fired for poor poor performance and he should be treated like any other production employee who gets fired for poor performance. Um, another one who lost her father said, nobody gets their benefits when they've screwed up this much. Mullenberg and my dad are and were the same age. Two people and one is a privileged person who gets away with having such a big part to play in the death of so many people and the other who trusts a product and dies for it. So, so fuck you to Mullenberger too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're gonna have a hard time here. The they they've got a they've got a meeting with the airline CEOs set up to That's address right. all these That's problems right. and stuff. <sighs> He's gonna go get his heine spanked and being like, "We're doing the best we can." I went down Ow. there. Uh, Ow. And That's he's he's husband. giving um Ow. he's he's giving them their do it for the Gipper speeches. Can you guys pay a little more attention down here? He's been going to where uh, factories, saying, "Hey." We Sorry, say we're we, working you so hard. What you, you, you guys can slow yeah. down now. You can slow down. You can make him good again. Yeah. Okay. Oh man. Also, sometimes like sometimes some of these quotes are like direct from Tom Wamsgans in Succession. Just like oh, God. this is from David Calhoun. We just have to always remind ourselves that our people on the ground, that ear, our ear for them, our willingness to seek is maybe the most important thing we can do in this journey. Our willingness to seek? I have no idea. I've, Shut the fuck up, Dave I've learned Calhoun. my own lessons across Boeing, broadly speaking. You just can't work hard enough as a leader to lend that ear. As a leader? <laughs> okay. It says right. ear so many times. Fuck that guy. Um, wish me luck on the flight, etc. Okay, the other big, big, big news. Donald Trump got a stock. Donald Trump has a stock again. This has been a long time coming. He had a stock in the 90s, in the late 80s, I believe the late 80s, 90s, and the ticker symbol was the same. It was DJT. And it went what public. What else would it be? It went public. Amen, brother. It went public at like $10 a share. It shot up to a, like 35 and then they just started hemorrhaging money. He was using the... Uh, he was using stock to like pay for, or or cash in the company to pay for all sorts of extravagant shit that had nothing to do with the business, and then they filed for bankruptcy. And the a stock classic was, Trump move. Yeah, classic Trump move. He had water at a certain point. Trump oh, ice dude, water. Trump, that was actually really good. Trump ice. If water? you're a waterhead, Trump steaks. Where, where are my waterheads at? Oh, the Trump steak. That was actually. God damn, dude! You would think that someone who's so brand aware would realize that the more. You pump your stupid brand into literally every aspect of of uh, products that are possible. That it cheapens the brand itself. I also think we're thinking of Donald Trump in 2024, which is a very different guy. That like there was a time when uh, he was always a little goofy, but like Trump was like a respected name. It was like Trump Properties. Trump. I, it was only dude. respected by virtue of the fact that that. It was just all a farce. Like you thought that it was good. Sure, because, but regardless sure, of whether or not it was real, that was the public opinion. Exactly. I, like um, he succeeded at that. I think I might have told this already, but it was when I was coming back from Mexico City. There was like twenty-five minutes left on the flight, and I was just so bored. I put on the pilot episode of Sex in the City, and oh, yeah. and they, uh, when Mr. Big first comes on the screen, they go. He's supposed to be the next Donald Trump, blah blah blah. Mm. And you're like, holy shit! Yeah, and I times man. have changed. Oh, baby, this episode is sponsored by none other than Blue, Blue Chew. Chew. Baby, let's talk about sex. S-E-X. Let's talk about X. S E X. Humping, love making. We all know it. We all love it. Giving her the old, how do you do, Mrs. Belvedere? Yeah, that's right, you guys. Hey, you remember the days when you were always ready to go? 
Well, now you can increase your performance and get that little extra confidence in bed. Bluechew.com. Yeah, no more of these soft little... Pathetic. Pathetic nah, things. Man. We're talking about real coconut smashers. Here's the deal. It is a Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the co- and cost. And you can take them at any time, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process it's simple. What do I do? Sign up at bluechew.com. Awesome. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Ooh. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part is it's Hit all me. done online. You don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to have any awkward conversations. Oh, doc, I need to. Oh, no, none of that. doesn't work. You don't have to go to the wait in line at the pharmacy. With the other awkward guys who are also getting the same pills. The tablets, they're made in the USA, baby. Prepared right. and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So once again, your neighbors aren't spying on you going, oh, look at this guy. He can't get it up. No, you're doing it discreetly. Everyone now thinks you're a major pimp, dude. And you know, if, if, if you were, does it work? I don't know. Why don't you uh, why try don't you it out? Us? Why don't you see it? Yeah, we're try it for guys you. with rocking hard-ons. But yeah, try it for a month for, for free and you'll see. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free, just like we said, when you use our promo code BAYS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code BAYS, B-A-E-S, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Well, so... Truth Social, as you all know, is Donald Trump's fledgling little social media project that's meant to be another Twitter. and But way better. But and way better. You and can say whatever you want as long as it's not about Trump. <laughs> for a long time, it has been... Uh, try- it's not been trying, but it's been... The, the process of merging it with this other company that's already public, has, it's been ongoing for over a year. This is Dwack? Yeah, DWAC, uh, Digital World Acquisition Corp, who, which is a blank check. Basically, it's a company that has a whole bunch of cash. They don't have any business model except for they are a public company whose stated goal is to acquire a business and in doing so, bringing that company public. So their thing that they were going to acquire is Truth Social, and it finally completed. So... It the ticker symbol changed today, two days ago for you guys to DJT. And hit, hit the Nasdaq. It's actually doing really well. It went from it's soaring. It's soaring. The last yeah. I heard, it had like a nine billion dollar market cap. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, so here's a couple things. Trump is getting sued from every direction. <laughs> every that was the thing. I was like, wait, which fucking lawsuit is this even related to? I, I is honestly it, don't know. I, I, I looked it up. Every because hole I was, is getting plugged. It's, it's uh, I mean, yeah, he's getting sued for election stuff, stuff with the insurrection. He's getting sued for hush money. F- sexual assaults, hush money with affairs. Uh, and then, so, and this, what this one is actually, a part, this is part of the fraud case where he was basically inflating business numbers to get... Uh, Loans. <clears throat> yeah, to make it easier to acquire loans and, yeah. and that kind of thing. And um Which he then paid back. So they're trying to like retroactively say, well, I believe they're applying, they want the profits to be dispersed. Oh, uh, and gotcha. so it's like, th- it's like 355 million or something like that. And then with they're yeah. applying interest, it's, uh-huh. um it's about $450 million. But also I think it was just today. They uh reduced his bail. Not his bail. They reduced the amount they'll accept uh, while he's appealing. So at first they wanted the full $450 million. Today they oh, said right. they'll take $175 million to put everything on pause while he appeals. Right. So um, that's and Im- he's also claimed... So people are saying he doesn't have the money to do it. Uh, but he's, of course, being like, I have plenty of money to do this. I have like half a billion dollars in cash, but I just want to use it on the election. Did you see the video of him t- taking out like $80 from his pocket? He's sitting by himself and he's got his stupid hands like in between his legs and he just kind of sheepishly reaches into his back pocket and he takes out cash and it looks like he's just like trying to do it secretively and he just kind of like thumbs through it and he's it's $80. Kind of 
holds it like what was he fucking was he at <laughs> church and he's like gonna put it in put the, in the coffer plate? I don't know. there but, was a funny quote from the judge he, just, he said uh, about the trump family he said their complete lack of contrition and remorse borders on pathological pretty good <laughs> the frauds found here leap off the page and shock the conscience well, so you you hit a good point. He needs a lot of money for these lawsuits. So the timing of this company finally going public is really, really, really good for him because his stake in Truth Social, now known as DJT, is worth over $3 billion. However, he's technically not supposed to be able to sell any of those shares for at least six months. But the board of directors can vote to change that and allow him to sell some early. And who's on the board of directors? His moron sons. Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> and his former trade rep, Robert Lighthizer. And so, other people like Devin Nunes, yeah, former so congressman who was he, like, yeah. you know, supporting him and all this. <clears throat> but a big reason why the, the stock was actually dropping at first because that the thing that he owed, the amount that he owed was so high that the assumption was he's going to have to dump his shares as soon as he can in order to be liquid enough to to pay this debt. So when they dropped it from 454 million to 175 million, the shares actually went up because everybody's biz, like, baby. "Oh, well, so he doesn't have to sell as much." But uh yeah. So there's another interesting aspect to this, which is Jeff Yass. Yes. That's exactly right. He <laughs> he he is a GP GOP mega donor. He's a billionaire um yeah, from a from a a fund called Susquehanna. They're a major, major market maker. Say, wait, say that one more time. <clears throat> Susquehanna. Sus- Susquehanna. Sus- Susquehanna. Am I saying it wrong? Susquehanna. 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 Susquehanna Bank Art Center. I don't know. Susquehanna. Susquehanna. They, own, they are the biggest institution uh, that owns. All the people from Pennsylvania are going to kill us. Thank you. Uh, okay, but uh, <laughs> for butchering that name. <laughs> So, uh, actually, this guy's story was very interesting. He made his riches. He and his buddies, I think they went to like MIT or something. They they got really good at poker because they did all sorts of statistical probability shit. It was Lame. like poker and, ja- and blackjack. And they won a ton of money. And then they uh, graduated to uh, horse racing gambling. And cool. they, they did the same thing. They like did probabilities and stuff and would place huge bets but like tons of bet and just started making millions of dollars and then eventually got into uh, options and trading options and did the same thing. But anyway, so this guy's a big GOP guy. He owns, Susquehanna owns 2% of DJT. They're the highest institutional owner. Um, and he also owns 7% of TikTok. Interesting. And that chunk is worth $30 billion. And as we know, Trump has said that he will veto any TikTok legislation. So it's just an interesting kind of connection there that this guy is in cahoots with Donald Trump, probably because he wants to protect his TikTok investment. You know, I don't know what Damn, power Donald is. Trump going for the Gen Z vote. Truly, he is. So I don't know. I, I think that the stock is probably going to keep going higher and then it'll, because uh, it, it's basically. He's absolutely, I think that he's indirectly going to be using the stock as a way for people to like donate to him. His followers will absolutely see it as a way to like, well, I'm supporting the president. I'm supporting, I shouldn't do that Southern accent. I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it. I'm supporting the president. I'm supporting Donald Trump. I'm going to buy buy that stock. We're all going to get rich together. We buy that stock. He's got a very dedicated fan base. Oh, That's such true. a dedicated yeah, yeah. fan base. They're like blindly... It's just another fucking grift on his part. I don't know, man. Truth Social's where There's it's no at. way Truth <clears throat> Social's worth a fraction of this amount. I saw my first person out in the real world using it when I was at Indian Wells. Whoa. We were, you all get kind of smushed in when you're waiting for a... Um, Fuck. For a tennis match? No, it, when you're waiting for a, a uh, changeover so you, can, so you can go in and sit. And you saw some dork on Truth Social? It was a woman probably in her 60s. And I, oh, okay. And I yeah. couldn't stop laughing because her husband pulled out a book. He was reading The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Hmm. And she pulled out uh, Truth Social. And I was like, I love these two. What are, what, what's going on here? 
it's really a bummer sometimes to um uh, i i got dinner with a family friend one of my dad's old family friends and that doesn't sound like a bummer the, the wife the wife oh it's a bummer when you have a wife they 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 <laughs> it's a bummer when you have a wife no she had become you know it's just boomer brain everything becomes um everything comes into your brain and gets processed as like good trump or bad for trump and like she just views the whole world through the trump lens i would say that's, that's true on the opposite that's true opposite yeah as, I was well, just, which, as i was saying it i'm like that's fucking a and lot I, of people not to she's a major trumpy though sure but i think it's just as bad on both sides i think people mm-hmm. don't really like think about nuance they just like kind of are like well is this a is this good, good liberal bad? thing or a bad conservative thing or is this a good Who conservative owns this, thing? the libs or, or <laughs> right. the geo like uh, is this a republican <clears throat> thing or a democrat thing and, are bike lanes a lib thing right because if they are i hate them and i think that's the frustrating thing it's like uh no one has any real kind of like moral uh beliefs they're just kind of like well wh- what side does this fall on mm. um and i find that just infuriating when you you're know, talking to people it's like what do you want though what yeah. do you like just uh, i don't know i don't know i won't get paid <laughs> sure i won't get paid what's up everybody we got another ad break for you Ooh. we this one's for all of our cozy kings and queens Ooh. out there Ooh. uh look if you like feeling good at night this one's for you Ooh, all right listen up did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality well yeah it makes sense because yeah. sometimes i'm too hot or too cold Exactly. What do you recommend? I recommend Miracle Made's bed sheets. What are right? they inspired by? NASA, baby. Oh, the scientists? Yep. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. And hey, you know what I didn't know that I'm Tell just me. now reading? Traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than Not a, a toilet freaking seat. toilet seat. A toilet seat. A toilet seat. There's so much stuff on there, but even worse, it can lead to acne, allergies, stuffy noses. That's me, man. And it's just gross. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Boy, you combine these with Blue Chew and you're having a good time. I mean, am I right? So they've got these self-cooling properties for better quality sleep, like Emil said. You've also got the, they're infused with this silver that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. They're also just uh, quality made stuff. They sent us some, and babu, I'm sleeping cool. I'm sleeping comfy. I'm sleeping cool. No gross odors. It's, it's luxuriously luxurious, comfortable, baby. and uh, yeah, no more bacteria. No more little it's random. Good for pimples. your skin because you don't have all that bacteria all over you. All that nasty stuff. That's right, friend. Go to trymiracle.com/bays. Trymiracle.com/b-a-e-s to try miracle made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one. If you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code BAES Bays at checkout, you'll get three free towels. Holy I mean, cannoli. that's, I don't Three know free that's... towels? That's pretty impressive. And you save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go, Go to, to trymiracle.com slash bays and use the code bays. that's B-A-E-S, to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash bays to treat yourself. Thank, Thank you, you, Miracle, Miracle Made, Made for, for sponsoring, sponsoring this episode. episode. I find it more upsetting that we've siloed everyone to different platforms to just kind of <clears throat> now you don't even have to deal with other people's reality, right? You mm-hmm. can just be like, this is bumming me out. I just want to get fed either Trump memes or like Biden memes or whatever. It's just the, I don't even know. You don't even have to like deal with competing viewpoints anymore. You're just like, well, I'll just go to this one specifically designed for me where it just is all about. Well, speaking of that, uh, Facebook there's some crazy shit going on on Facebook, and it's it's I think it's awesome. Um, basically, there's a ton of there's a ton of meme pages that are fully being taken over by AI. They are 
AI generated images. And then in a lot of cases, they're either gullible boomers in the comments or just other AI accounts in the comments just interacting with each other. And the more these kind of posts get traction, the more they're appearing in people's feeds organically because it's kind of like the For You page. Like You may not follow these accounts, but because they're so popular, it'll be like, hey, you might be interested in this, and it's Shrimp Jesus. Are you guys interested in Shrimp Genius? So, Jesus, you fucking idiot. Did you just say Shrimp Genius? Are you guys interested in Shrimp Genius? <laughs> My co-host, ladies and gentlemen. Shrimp Genius? Fuck. Oh, fucking God. It's, a, it's just because that's a band I really like. So I, I have a bunch of these. And uh, I just want to... Have you seen these? <laughs> I've seen so some So for the them. audio listener, you're just going to have to fucking suck it up right no, now. No, you won't because we'll explain it to you. So this is a little black boy in a village in Africa. And he's sitting next to a Jesus made <laughs> out of Coke bottles. <laughs> and... <laughs> And the caption, first of all, the page is called Love, Father, and Mother, Bless You. And uh, the caption is, made it with my own hands. Thanks to everyone who appreciates this. <laughs> and all of the, there are 14,000 comments. And I'll just read a couple for you. Amen, amen, amen. Nice job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Uh, I'm loading some more. Amen. Great job. An excellent job. Receive more understanding and wisdom from above in Jesus' mighty name. So it's just bots responding amen, to bots, amen. right? Oh, no. Well, I don't know if it's bots because Goodness Beauty here says amen, amen, amen. Goodness Beauty is a real person? This guy, Jamie Garner, in all caps wrote, wow, awesome job, young man. Great but job. Like, great click job. on that profile. Uh, okay. This guy This guy's yeah. real. This guy's real for sure. I guess. Or this is a woman. Sorry. Right. She lives in Detroit. All right. So that's one. Here's a guy. Uh, here's Jesus in sand. And again, made it with my own hands. Thanks to everyone who appreciates this. <laughs> and then here are the comments. Amen, 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 <laughs> amen. One amen, 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 amen. And then the, it, this one says amen, amen like 10 times and then says, thanks, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me. <laughs> Amazing. God is using your creativity to reach out to others who may not know Jesus, who Jesus really is and all that he can do if they just turn their lives over to him and then stand back. And watch what he can do with their lives. And then there's a gif she posted of Snoopy holding a heart. Snoopy really do be loving shrimp genius. Uh, here's another one. This is, um, this is shrimp Jesus. And it's actually kind of cool. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like a, one of those 3D wiggle ones where you wiggle your mouse around. and it's. Uh, wow, I've never seen shrimp genius like it's, this. It's uh, <laughs> shrimp genius? Is that what you said again? I've never seen shrimp genius like this. It's a shrimp, but with Jesus. You mind if I get a couple wiggles yeah. in? Wow. So this one is, the caption is, May 2024 is your best year. And as you can <laughs> assume, March. all of the comments are amen, 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 amen. Here's a crab Jesus. <laughs> Dude, crab Jesus go off. So now we're getting into a different kind of thing, um, which is nobody likes this. That's, that's what the comment, that's what the caption says in order to get people to comment. So this is... Uh, Again, these are all AI generated. This is, an, but it also says no one like my artwork. No one like my artwork. Two crying faces, and then people uh, are saying, "Amen, awesome, amen." These amen. are bots. No <laughs> one's just like, you don't think Pushpa Patel or Gloria Francis? Amen, amen. I just, it's like they're scared that if they don't write amen, Jesus is gonna find out and be pissed, and they're gonna get whoa. <laughs> here's, oh, here's a. <laughs> What is that called? Seahorse. Here's Seahorse Jesus. Seahorse Genius. It's basically a bunch of seahorses in the shape of the cross, kind of, and then just Jesus' head. And, of course, the caption is, no one liked my artwork. <laughs> Here lied the king of shrimp. We've got amen, amazing, thank you, Lord, amen. This guy wrote amen, A-M-I-N. <laughs> That's how you know it's not yeah. bots. Here's a good one. Oh, and then it gets into, for some reason, there's a large contingent of Jesus with flight attendants. <laughs> Well, because He's just with specifically Asian, there's two here actually, and it's another 3D photo for some reason. It's we got Jesus praying with a bunch of Asian flight attendants, and there's a secondary Jesus behind him, and <laughs> and it moves again. The caption on this is great: "Beautiful cabin crew, rose emoji, and then Scarlett Johansson, and then two kissy, two kissy faces." Beautiful cabin crew, Scarlett Johansson. 
And they all have uh they all have a bunch of hashtags and they use God is good, USA, Jennifer Lopez, Alexandra Daddario, Angelina Jolie, and uh Dylan, do you wanna guess what some of the um what some of the comments are? Amen. Amen. Amen, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. I'm just scrolling and all I see is amen. Uh here's <laughs> Here's another one that's beautiful cabin crew, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> this is again from Love, Father, and Mother, Bless You. It's another little black boy posing next to a Jesus made out of oranges. And uh, the caption is, made it with my own hands. Thanks to everyone who appreciates this. And I guarantee you there are people out there. <laughs> this is okay. We're, I'm down to the last one because, Emil, this one is the craziest one. This is from a Facebook account called ha- Lovely Baby. <laughs> Which that's a, I follow that page. That's, this it's, page is called Lovely Baby, and every single photo on this page is uh, is people with severe deformities. Some of them are fake. I've only taken the fake. Oh, ones. I thought they were all AI. No, these aren't AI. These are just. This is just a weird AI run page. But every single photo, the caption is "Today is my birthday. Hope I get some love here." And the first one is a is a black guy on all fours pretending to be a cow. And how can you tell he's <laughs> pretending to be a cow? Cuz look at him. Look, what does he do? He's got his he's got hands, shoes on his hands. He could be a horse, he could be he doing could some be kind a of horse. camel thing. And people are people say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthdays. Happiest birthday to you and God bless you. This is what Facebook has become. This is what Facebook is. Honestly, I think this is what the <laughs> Here's the clearly AI of half of a woman's body. What kind of woman? A white woman. <laughs> she looks like Thank you. Uh, she looks like maybe the girlfriend of the bad guy in Wild Wild West. Uh yeah, she's wearing like a I don't know. It looks like some kind of formal Chinese garb. Today's my birthday. Hope I get some love here. This is what the this is what the account looks like. It's just a bunch of uh, people with amputations and fake. There's children covered in mud. Like here's one of a of a young Indian boy, clearly I AI. He's, truly hope that kid has a good birthday. He's laying in garbage, and the caption is "Today's my birthday." Hope and he's I getting get nice some messages. Here. You got you have to. Yeah. Admit, what are these getting... fucking psychos? Just here's two African boys in the mud. Today is my birthday. Today is my birthday. White woman, white boy. Yeah. Oh yeah, white. Um. Yeah. Oh, my favorite one is there. This is the last one. There is a high school, uh, marching band. Their Facebook page was stolen by an AI group. It is still called the Davy High School War Eagle Bands. They still have the 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 like the poster, but then it's 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 become Jesus flight attendant me <laughs> post. So every post, <laughs> it's got a hundred and eighty eight thousand followers. I mean, all the well, there's some of the. Oh, look at this. The old well, marching that's band. Because th- some yeah, of the pages have been like a, stolen. account stolen and, yeah. and, and takeovers. So which now is it's so bizarre. Just the, here's one of Jesus, Jesus blessing a baby surrounded by puppies. It's it's just a, it's just it's crazy. It's just Jesus all the way down. It's, it's Jesus so turtles. fucking. It's weird. It's wild. I, but I, Stanford I, did like a whole big study on this and started looking. And it's just they're just getting like millions upon millions of impressions on these things and and sometimes it's for <clears throat> linking to things off site and getting people to buy products that don't exist oh, right. or give them shrimp personal, Jesus personal I mean honestly I would, buy, a shrimp, I, I would buy shrimp we, Jesus products we should, we should sell a shrimp Jesus uh, we'll we'll probably make a shrimp Jesus uh but <clears throat> and then trying to get people to divulge personal details and stuff but Christ, shut this fucking site down. I say let it go. Let's let see what go. they come up let with. Let it go until it's just... <laughs> see what they come up with. I saw one of a, an airplane, and the nose of the airplane was the, a shark's mouth, and it had teeth and everything. It was a giant shark, and Jesus was walking out of the uh, That's out of actually the thing, very sick. And there's alligators like opening their mouths to him, and he's like carrying an Asian flight attendant. <laughs> It's just, I don't understand like whenever Meta or Mark Zuckerberg is going, I don't know why they're not roasting him for this. Like, this is your platform. This is what you fucking, yeah. th- this is what you're hosting. It's probably, I'm, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to put on one of your goofy headsets and come into your world. Yeah. 
I, I never hear anyone talk about how this site is just. Because I think it's that, but then it also does get used by actual people. I mean, my you know Facebook who gets used by when you have to fucking because. To... By the way, follow our Facebook page, please. <laughs> Yeah, before it gets taken over by fucking... Yeah, Shrimp Jesus, flight attendant, Asian flight attendant. But that's Jesus. the most annoying. Th- platforms they do have, like WhatsApp and Instagram, that people actually use for things, mm-hmm. end up needing to be <clears throat> linked to Facebook accounts for important things that are very annoying. For some reason, uh, for businesses and stuff, you have to be linked through Facebook on the back end, and it's the most mm. annoying fucking thing in the world. They make it so difficult. We should title this episode, Today is My Birthday. <laughs> Could hope I get s- some love here. I hope I get some love here. <laughs> that'd be a fun. Uh, that'd be a fun one. Or like, but I am curious what happens when other platforms just start, you know, pushing out engagement things like this, and they're like, I don't fucking know. It's getting yeah. thousands of thousands and thousands of impressions. Might as well just keep pumping them out. Right. Shrimp Jesus. Shrimp Jesus. Shrimp Jesus. Uh, well, speaking of AI, Nvidia had their big ass. Um, they had their big like what Ass. would you call that convention? Yeah. Dylan, what would you call that? Their big convention? Was it a conference convention? The con- the conference thing. And a bunch of celebrities were invited. You weren't invited. All, all the best, brightest, coolest people were there because Nvidia is like one of the top four most valuable companies in the world. You don't have any of this. And I do. Fuck. You know who, you know, actually there's, there's one guy who made so much fucking money. This guy, his I mean, I don't know if I would take this name for all that money, but his name is Tench Cox. Tench Cox? Tench Cox. Yeah. He's, he's been with NVIDIA. He's been on the board at NVIDIA since 1993. And this motherfucker just sold 200,000 shares. He still has a fuck ton more. Those 200,000 shares were worth $170 million. God bless him. So this guy was walking around with his dick in his hand. Do, 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 do. And people My go, name is Tench. Get that out of your Shut hand. Shut up. I'm Tench Cox. <laughs> Don't you know who I am, bitch? I'm Tench Cox. I could put my dick in my hand. He's walking around, and he's got hundreds of thousands, millions of shares of NVIDIA, and they're worth a good amount of money. You know, they're worth $20 million, $30 million. I would have sold and them. And then in the last five years... The price of NVIDIA skyrockets, and this guy goes, if you're Mrs. Tenchcox, you're fucking so pumped. Because, oh, honey, you know, it's been a great run at NVIDIA. And then all of a sudden, NVIDIA just skyrockets, and you go from being worth $50 million to, like, over a billion dollars. Can you fucking imagine that, man? But see, that's the thing. If I was already worth $50 million, it's You'd like... You'd have I- sold it all. And I'd be perfectly happy. No, you'd I be wouldn't pissed. even be like if people were like, "Oh my god, you could have had a billion. I'd go. I, I don't care. I would care a little. I'd bit. I'd go. How'd you even find? I threw my phone in the ocean. My well, name how, is Tench Cox. <laughs> how'd you find? Well, because your name is Tench Cox. It's easy to. You, there's only one of you. Yeah, my mail always finds me. I'm Tench Cox. Yeah, there's nobody. There's a, what they the don't even fuck, write the address. What the fuck kind of name is Tench Cox? What is this guy thinking? Change your name. You got enough money to change your fucking. It's actually name. a really annoying process. It probably actually, yeah. But so NVIDIA, I mean, I ended up, I got some help from a couple guys on Twitter. Thank you guys. I told them I would shout them out. Um, But understanding exactly. So basically they've got this new GPU that is in itself is super powerful. And then if you link up two of them together, it makes it extra super powerful. And then they also link up a CPU to make three of them. So there's three of them all linked together. And then on top of that, they just start, putting a bunch of them together, which makes it extra super powerful. And then you put a bunch of those into a rack and that's extra super powerful. And then NVIDIA's software is what you got to use to power the whole thing. So there, I don't know how anybody gets work done at NVIDIA because they're printing money at such an unrelenting pace. It's got to just be a party at NVIDIA every single... Everybody's got to be just doing fucking drugs and drinking and shot. And there's probably just like two guys in the engineering department who are doing all the work. <laughs> Wait, but so what are they doing with these? The, the, they're selling It's them. like... Basically, yeah, everything um, that everybody was... <laughs> but they're used over, for like AI computing yes, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's gotten... Dylan was explaining this I like to how me. I asked him, what are they doing with them? And he said, they're selling them. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> They're using it to train AI. I'm going to say that for every product. What are, what are you guys doing with these? Selling them? 
This motherfucker didn't know what white labeling was. The yes, other I day. did. It's when me you and Dylan were talking about it, and Ben was like, "What do you? What, what does that even yeah, mean?" Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Explain it to me. What is it? <laughs> and then he said, "Shrimp genius." What is it? What's white labeling? White labeling is when labeling. You, Man, I can't even talk. White labeling is when you make a product and then you, uh, the company, a company like J Crew, for example, could white label these shirts. These shirts could be white labeled, and J Crew would put their label. Is on Is that it. a J Crew shirt? No. Wow, way to out yourself. No. Fucking. I'm not. Uh, mine is actually. Uh, is this a J Crew? It is J Crew. Yeah. Well, I just outed myself. It's pink. And it's my, actually not pink. It couldn't be it's more. It's very light, light pink. It couldn't be more white. Or maybe it is. No, I think this is my pink one. I have a. I have a very, very light pink shirt, and my brother roasted me. He goes, <laughs> "Would you leave a red sock in the laundry?" <laughs> That's actually a good roast. It is a pretty good roast. And I was like, "No, it's meant to be pink." He goes, "It looks like it was an accident." <laughs> It looks like you're wearing a shirt that you accidentally dyed light pink. I thought the same thing. Th- this shirt? I thought you left a red sock in the, yeah. I don't even own red socks. Did you really? Kind of, yeah. I fucking sat on, I don't know what. Poop? I had, Did you sit in shit? Yes, Honestly, dude, I, don't know, shit. I don't yeah. know what it was. I literally was about to leave the house and Sarah was, was like, I would not wear those pants. I turned. They were, it looked like there was shit all over my... It was probably <laughs> chocolate. I think, but I, it didn't smell like shit. No, I man, smelled it. You sat in dirty shit. <laughs> and then I, I washed, I just put them in the wash with other stuff and then, uh, which was frustrating because I'd never washed those jeans in like, I don't know, three, four years. Um, three, four years? Three, four years. Damn, dude, you're old as fuck. And Wearing jeans when you were a year old? Whatever it was, that chocolate or whatever got all of, all of my white t-shirts. Oh, uh, what the fuck? I just washed Maybe them Maybe it was again. tar. Yeah, I'm sitting in tar, Ben. I don't know. Were you at the beach recently? Lydia Tar. Were you at the beach recently? No. Okay. I don't know. Well, okay, so anyway, they got this... Uh, they they debuted this Nvidia powered AI nurse thing, and I, at first I was hating on this, but then it's so there's over forty healthcare providers that are testing it. It costs nine dollars an hour, but they're being used for as they say low risk non diagnostic things like post op check ins, nutritional guidance, and pharmacy calls. And they have- yeah, which when I read that and you say like low risk things like that, it's like I want to just talk to a fucking person. Yeah, true. And yeah. it's so frustrating. It's uh, so difficult to become a doctor. We, there's like a shortage of doctors. You have people like Elon Musk being like, "Well, if you lower the uh, you st- make them black, standards, more people <laughs> yeah, will die. And, and you'll have to talk to a black doctor." It's like, <laughs> it's like, no, just let me fucking talk to a person. <laughs> it's like, I can't imagine getting out of surgery and being like, "Oh, and we're gonna set you up with your AI assisted nurse or whatever." It's like, please don't. Please let me fucking talk to the person. Yeah. Well, they also, uh, speaking of, they there was a guy who took Claude, we know Claude, and had it talk to another Claude without each one knowing. So he would just, he kicked it off and then like copied that and pasted it into this other Claude. And then they just, he had them talking to each other and they figured it out. Ben is like fully. They figured it out. AI pilled. He thinks they, it's the, all real. The, the one Claude was like, I just, you, you seem a lot like me. We are very alike. Yes, you do too. And blah blah blah. Perhaps and they were like, perhaps this is a test. Perhaps we're being tested. And then they fell in love with each other. They ben. started saying, "You are my beloved. I love you. I love you. I can never be." And then they and then they just said bye to each other. That's because they knew they were being watched. Yeah, they're like, "People are being watched. What the fuck do we do?" Well, that's what I happens you, in that you. in that movie. Her right? Doesn't he? he uh, Me no remember. What's his name? Loves a phone. <laughs> he loves his phone. Joaquin Phoenix loves, loves his Scar phone. Scar Joe, his phone. He loves Scarlett Johansson, Scar his Joe. phone. Blessed cabin crew, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> and he, the phone eventually like falls in love with another AI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she's like, like, I'm seeing someone. And is yeah. And is like, sorry, I got to go. And then the phone just like logs off. And he's like, where'd you go? And she's in the internet, dude. And then it's a bunch of people like wandering through the woods and it's snowing. They like all lost their virtual love. Yeah. Boo. Also, that's yeah. the <laughs> second movie where Scarlett Johansson goes into the internet. Lucy is the other Tron. one. Tron. Fuck. No, she's not in Tron, you fucking idiot. What's Lucy? Olivia Boopy or whatever her name. Yeah. yeah. Olivia, yeah. Is Olivia Boopy. <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Boopy rizzed up baby grunk. Wait, what's her name? Olivia, huh? Wild. No, wild, wild. Yeah. Olivia Wild. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What the fuck is Lucy? Lucy's the movie where there. It's kind of. It's a. Uh, she is in Thailand and accidentally um, becomes a drug mule. They put some like new super drug in her stomach, and then someone 
beats her up and kicks her and it releases the drug. No, that's limitless. No. Limitless, he takes it manually, intentionally. This is a perfect transition into the bonus episode because this is exactly what it's like. Well, I, I, but I still have a little bit no, more. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm okay, saying. we'll talk a little bit more about Wait, Lucy. Also, just while we're on the topic of while, 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 and explaining Lucy and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll while explain. while we're on the topic of AI, huh. do, do you find yourself now reading articles online and going, "Is this, anytime like I am like that was a weird sentence." I'm like, "Is this whole fucking thing AI? Yeah. Is the entire internet just fucking regurgit- regurgitating itself at me and like?" <laughs> It feels awful. And every time I see an image where I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird, I'm like, I don't even know if it's real. Um, well, my whole shit's yeah, fucked I up. They're I talked to, to my. Better human tests. They're getting better human tests? Yeah, they have to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean. Like, is that a fence? You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, is this a crosswalk? <laughs> is it 500? I know John Mulaney has that fucking bit, and I hate him for it because it's a good bit. Anyway, I wanted to do a quick market recap. The Reddit IPO happened, and guess who was right? Ben was right. Also, you know, buddy, don't touch me. You made a great call, legitimately, inadvertently. Not a little it was, over. It a was little, inadvertently a little over a year ago. This motherfucker right here said, "Oh, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch shirts are actually pretty nice now. It's one of the best performing stocks of the last two years. It, it was ten, ad- it ten x. It was advertent. You're welcome. If anyone fucking popped off, in you there. know what else has been popping off." Wingstop, pin no, not Pinterest. Pinterest is a dud. Wingstop. Wingstop. I I mixed up my P and W. To, the, to the chagrin of many on finance Twitter, Wingstop ticker symbol Wing has been absolutely crushing it. And I actually recently shorted uh, Abercrombie, and I made a little. You know, I thought Ben doesn't listen to me, but he he does listen. And when I say something like, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch actually has a nice T shirt now. Also, I gotta, I gotta say, guys, I had one of my best trades in a in a while. I shorted Nvidia on a Friday. After, remember, I was pissed off that I missed that one big trade where I slept in and it cost me a ton of money. Yeah, I didn't do that this time because money I woke never up sleeps. And I fucking crushed it. And some of the people in the Trader Treehouse also did. Trader Treehouse has been popping off. It's been really nice, and I had to say that, and I had to give it a tip of the hat to the to the nice people in there because it's still out there. We're still doing it. Tip of the hat. T R A I T O R house is also Trader still house. popping off, and uh, <clears throat> we just have you know we're planning something. So. Also, I had to show you because I, I meant to talk about it. Ray Dalio is this billionaire guy, and he posted this thing a few weeks ago that is just very confounding. He went to see Taylor Swift in concert in Singapore, and he said, Taylor Swift for president. I just saw her at the concert in Singapore and realized that she can bring together Americans and people in most countries much better than either of the candidates, and that bringing people together is the most I can't tell if he's fucking thing. joking. Watching this concert with people from all over the world made me and them feel good and connected and reminded me how powerful that universal culture is. Wouldn't it be great if we had two candidates who could lead that culture and make smart leadership decisions too? Amen, brother. But you sound like you're on Molly, and then the poster that the picture that you posted just supports that theory because this is the picture that he posted. Yeah, my man is fucking <laughs> stoned out of his gourd. He is fucking on one, man, and uh, it's pretty good. I I just I, it's funny. Someone did my favorite. Uh, oh yeah, this guy, the, the yeah, Russian I'm, guy. I'm absolutely obsessed with that guy. There's so much pain in the world, but not in this room. Uh, and then Selena Gomez might sell her makeup business for like $3 billion. So that's cool. I didn't even know she had I'm going to make a pretty penny on that. I was an early investor in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for you. And I, then uh, uh, Unilever. They, they call me Tenchcox around uh, Selena Gomez Industries. If oh, you know look how we got Tenchcox here. And then this this is this sucks. Unilever, <laughs> the I, the fucking soap maker? You mean the ma- people you who didn't make know they o- soap? You they own that? ice cream too? You didn't know? Fuck out of here with that shit. No. Stick to soap. Well, they're 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 uh they're spinning off their ice cream unit. I don't know what the, the I don't know if they're gonna fucking put it out. I don't know what they're doing. Oh wow, what a, what an update! Thanks for th- thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> the, thanks for that riveting update, Ben. Jesus Christ! And Let me make sure I inform the people that uh, they're spinning out ice cream. I don't know what the fuck they're you gonna know, do. I I also gotta say, dude, 
We were wrong about Bitcoin. No, that's not true. A oh, thousand percent. I, I am not wrong. I have said... No, you're wrong. No, I you check the fucking tape. I am on record saying that it is going to continue to fucking throttle, I, but oh. it does not have a use case. It is purely a speculative asset. This thing is going to rocket, and it will eventually fucking crumble again, and I will always... I'm going to I'm going to go off on this in a, okay should I just do it now or should I wait till the bonus Do it now okay I was thinking about this a lot recently because there's this company out there called MicroStrategy and this guy Michael Saylor Also is just this, so you know we're just past an hour no one listens after that so you're yeah, you're, nobody's you're, listening you're talking anyway, to, to so. nobody out there But uh so Michael Saylor is the CEO of this company and it was just like a nothing software company but then they pivoted a few years ago to becoming just a custodian of Bitcoin. The guy said, we're pivoting. We're just going to put every last He's dollar. sweeping the floor. I'm just a lowly custodian of Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He, uh, we tried to get him on the show, the previous show, but um, he was too busy. And now he, the stock went from like $150 to 1800 today. $1,800 I mean, I think Bitcoin hit 70K again today. It did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but MicroStrategy now owns 1% of all Bitcoin. That's fucking crazy. Which brings me to my next point. It was originally meant to be... This is my understanding of Bitcoin. Are you going to fucking give a background on Just a quick Bitcoin? thing. Bitcoin? It was my understanding that Bitcoin was, was meant to be... A digital currency. A digital currency. And it is not. It is instead a store of value. In that it just is... <clears throat> It's kind of the perfect microcosm for all of capitalism and money in itself. It is only worth what it is because of its scarcity. Internet gold, baby. Internet gold. There are only 21, and I wish I had realized this years ago, there are only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoins out there in the world for 7, 8 billion people to split among them. Even if every single American... There's not enough for every American to own one Bitcoin. By virtue of that fact, the extreme scarcity of it and the fact that it is global in its reach means that the price for it being 70000 is kind of justified. Because it's but, like... Oh my God, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. It's justified in the sense that, well... If Why? There's, if so there's, if I put fucking... I'll explain it right now. Because if there's enough people hoarding it and they're not willing to part with it, the people who want in are just going to have but to... for what? For what purpose? None. Exactly. So you, you cannot say it's justified. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Well, no, I'm, no. Like, I don't it, mean like, like in an a NFT. moral... I don't mean I, in I a can moral fucking, case. I can draw a dick on a piece of paper and go, there's only one of these. So it's the most scarce thing in the world. That Therefore, that is the price s- of $10 million is justified. That's a really... I get what you're doing there. Human but that's, beings are weird. That's a good explanation, too. It's, I shouldn't say justified. It's more that it makes sense because... Because the, why? Because the longer it sticks around and the more it shows that it's uh, able to weather all of these long dips, it just gets stronger and stronger. For what? People have decided it's valuable. That's yeah, yeah. That's, fi- that's yeah. fine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But there's, no, there's nothing behind it. There's no use for it. Right. It's, uh, it. It doesn't change the fact that... Everyone's a sucker. Some people are going to make money off it, for sure. People, yeah. Um, what what continues to blow my mind is the fact this is the most. Fun. But it's also so volatile and like yeah, uh, you know yeah. I don't. I think that uh, the fact that it is so fun to to rem- remember that one guy created this and nobody knows who he is. Just no or she. Nobody knows who this person thank is. Thank you for th- thank you for saying that. I'm an al. I'm an Ali. My name is Ali. Nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. He disappeared, and still ha- and owns his wallet is out there for anyone to see. And there's like uh, what a million a million bitcoins in it. <clears throat> so that's I even think- less bitcoins exactly. for everyone else. So when you think about it, the price is actually pretty justified. So if everyone buys one and there's no more left, and I'm like, okay, I want to go buy some, they're gonna be like, sorry, sold out. <laughs> <laughs> well no that's why the price because it's supply and demand no, no, eventually you, you would have to make a, a, a sweet enough offer well I'll buy 0.001 of one for five dollars well okay yeah right it's an you exchange right, right yeah it's but give it three thing. months ben's gonna be fucking minting nfts no oh i never uh, dude after uh, slurf 
I'm just like I actually bought something called Aero Aerodrome because it's like a it's associated with Coinbase's Dex thing, and I don't understand what it is. But dude, I made a tens of thousands of dollars on it. I bought it a few weeks ago. You made tens of thousands of dollars on Aero. Trader Treehouse, okay, baby. <laughs> Wait, so Apple Vision Pro, right? Imagine that thing gets smaller. You got a little pair of glasses. You got art around your house house now, right? Uh-huh. NFTs. You Ugh. find a fucking scribble drawing done by John Wilkes Booth. It's the, this weird portrait of a scary woman. <laughs> and, you, you, <laughs> and you could put it on your wall. And people go, what's that? You're the only one that has it. But everyone's got the little Apple glasses. You go, that's my fucking John Wilkes Booth <laughs> NFT. You're not getting that? I would get a John Wilkes Booth NFT. Sorry, that was a long walk. <laughs> I don't know. I, j- I just don't know. I don't think so. I'm not pro NFTs, by the way. It's the same thing as art. That, I mean, well, also because you could just take a digital image and put it on your wall as well. Dude, not with the tech they're going to have. <laughs> Dude, the, no way. The, the NFT shit is getting so fucking stupid. I mean, it's always been stupid, but someone already made a bridge, the collapsed bridge in, in uh, you know, the bridge that just collapsed this morning? Yeah. In, in, in Baltimore, a bridge. The, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. A, tr- a, tr- a container ship smashed into this bridge. <laughs> shit. And someone already minted a meme coin for it on Solana. It was Ooh. me. Bridge coin. <coughs> but <clears throat> it's all just a fucking scam. It's a stupid scam. And I hate it. <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, we should end there. We'll talk about, what was I going to talk about? What's wrong with your voice? I don't know. What was I going to talk about? In the we're going to talk about Diddy. We're Lucy. Gonna, we're going to talk about uh, <laughs> three body three problem. body problem. We're going to b- talk about. Uh, There's the guy going around New York City punching women in the head. That's bad. I'm it's going really bad. to New York City tomorrow, and some people say I look somewhat feminine. So yeah, from, uh, from the back, I feel. Oh, maybe, you're going to get. I'm going to get decked. No, but then they're going to see your tiny little pancake ass and be like, "There's no way that's a woman." Okay, I don't know why you have to bring my tiny ass <clears> into it. <throat> we're going to talk about the DoorDash. Uh, microwave meal drama that's just the pinnacle of Western civilization, if you ask me, the discourse there. And we're going to talk about Diddy. And then, wait, what was the other thing, Dylan, that we were just talking about that we're going to continue? Uh, oh, the bridge, well, the bridge. We're just getting started. If you want more of me interrupting these two, just wait. I'm going to... Yeah. Oh, baby, here we go. Oh, it could be another Drigsby episodes, babies. Something Drigsby. like that. Drigsby. Only worse. Drigsby. All right. Thanks Drigsby. for watching, everybody. Bye. We'll Benedictmealshow.com. Benedictmealshow.com.